Hey guys, welcome back. Talking La Muerta Divius again today. Uh, thanks for joining me. Uh, quick shout out to Beth Sotelo for setting up all the um, scenario here for me to be able to produce this little video for you guys. She helped set up the cameras, the lighting, and the sound, which we had a little bit of issue with, but we figured it all out and we're ready to go. So today we thought I'd share with you uh, a kind of a step-by-step -step process from layout to um, final inks uh, for La Muerte Divius, and we're going to start with page one from this chapter. Um, we're going to take a, a look at some rough thumbnails, and then we're going to take it all the way to the finish shape. So let's get started. Check it out right now. All right. So what we have here is a shot of my desk and a La Muerte print uh, from a couple years back. All right. So generally when I get the, uh, let me set this up for you guys. Ooh, look at that. Huh? Generally, when I get the script from Mike and Brian, I go over and I read it twice. I'll read it once just to get a feel for where everything is, how it's happening, and let my emotions get caught up in whatever's happening in the story. And then the second reading is when I start getting really technical and thinking about shots. And I'll carry over anything that caught, my, caught me emotionally from the first reading, and I'll try to um, build, uh, you know, anchor images per page based on that idea or that feeling I got from the first read. So anyway, so for uh, page one of La Muerta Divius, we had a full-on scene. It's kind of a park scene. So we had it set up uh, with the opening sequence consisted of five panels. And so what I do generally is I, I, I rough it all out at this size. It's basically an eight and a half by 11 uh, sheet of paper turned in a landscape orientation. And I just I'm able to get two layouts per eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So anyway, let me show you a little trick here. But one thing I do, sorry, the back lit. One thing I like to do is I like to put grids at the back of each panel um, to kind of center the composition and create uh, interesting uh, ways of laying the page or that particular panel out. Uh, this for you can see here, like, so there's like these, grids, I, I break it up into three, you know, like a thirds. So each panel is broken up into thirds to create interest within the that panel. So with that in mind, you can see a lot of what I have will fit inside of those grids. You know, here's a broken up into thirds and here's these two people sitting right on that hash where the horizontal and vertical line meet up. This again, it just helps create interest in the panel. Uh, keeps from being a stagnant looking kind of a composition, you know? So it's something I use regularly. I've been using it more and more frequently. All right. So then here we see, uh, you get the layout. I also try to make sure to put in captions or where word balloons would go. Uh, occasionally Mike uh, or Brian will then remind me, hey, make sure to leave room here in this panel. It'll say so in the script because you now sometimes I just get carried away with the action of something and I'll it's nice to have them remind me like, hey, don't forget, we're getting people talking here. So it's like kind of neat. <laughs> All right, so let's move back into this now. So then what I do is I take this, uh, this piece of roughed out typing paper layout. Um, once approved, and I think that Mike and Brian, once they like what the direction of the flow of action is going, I then blow that up uh, to an 11 by 17 scale. Let me pull this back. There we go. Yeah, and so again, as you can see, sorry, just really quickly, you can see again, I'm still keeping that grid of the thirds, breaking each panel down into thirds uh, to generate an interesting composition, uh, just to, something, you know, visually pleasing to the eye that makes, uh, makes it interesting. Um, so in this, you see, uh, we'll see everything that's been blown up and, you know, added a little more detail here. This is somewhat similar to what it was in the previous panel. Um, same here, just kind of like building up the shapes and the, the forms of the characters. Um, I kept going back and forth here. I had here in the, in the initial rough, I have what seems to be someone sitting in a park bench, but then I thought, well, odd, it's kind of odd. Why would somebody in a park bench not be facing the pond? You know, it's like, that doesn't work. So I, I scrapped that idea and I, I decided to put somebody fishing, right? And I thought, well, that's kind of cool. It's good to have a little bit of action, and here is the point of interest. Uh, the two, our two main characters interacting here, and again, they sit right on this grid area where, where you know that it's, it's going to 
pull your eye into that direction. So I worked out a little bit of more of the placement. I was happy with most of it. You know, I've got everything looking somewhat similar to the rough layout that I have here. Uh, and so then what I do then is once this is ready and I feel confident, I will then transfer that over into the artboard, right? So let's take a look at that. Yeah. All right. So now <laughs> there's quite a bit of change here, right? All right. So panel one, you can see here, I, I had a flat on this direct eye view level look of this young character. And I thought that was too flat, lacked dimension. So I kind of pivoted and made it at an angle, almost like a three quarter angle, uh, which I thought it was a little more interesting. In this second panel, um, I added a butterfly to, to really build up the, the idea of where they are, you know. Uh, panel three, somewhat similar to what it was laid out in. I mean, not much was changed. Uh, I, I kind of built up these characters that were just a little bit smaller here. I built them up in the, in the actual final line art. And then <laughs> I went for mostly different kind of same idea of a little bit more bells and whistles. Uh, originally, I had one little kid fishing in this pond uh, when initially I had no kids fishing in the pond. And I went and added another little kid in the final line art. And I added a little uh, rocky area in the center of the pond for a bunch of ducks to be hanging out on. And for our two characters who are kind of standing off with their kids it seems like they're meeting at the park for whatever reason. Uh, I have them in the distance. Uh, so just kind of like pushing the reader into this shot right there. Uh, and then in this final panel, you see uh, we have a little frog kind of escaping from these two little kids. So again, uh, just a kind of a quick rundown from layouts to final inks for La Muerte Divius. Uh, just give you a little bit of a behind the scenes look as to how we, the creative team of Mike McLean, Brian Polito, by myself, uh, Cece de la Cruz and Marshall Dillon put together a La Muerte book for you guys. Uh, it's kind of a unique process. It's a lot of fun. I'm an old school analog artist, so I thought I'd share a lot of how I build up the page according to the script I get from the guys. So uh, yeah, just a quick rundown. Uh, thank you again for joining me. Uh, I'll be doing more of these videos, process videos regarding La, La Muerte Divius. So uh, stay tuned and uh, We'll get another one out to you guys here shortly. And thanks again for joining me. Be sure to follow me on Instagram, Joel Gomez Art, as well as YouTube, Joel Gomez Art, and Facebook, Joel Gomez Art. Uh, thanks again, guys, and uh, hope to catch you guys soon. Take care. Bye.